Narito po si Pastor Ed Rapiz sa Mestahing Pinamagatang. When little things become big. Dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that we're all here, up and about. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you for our health, the strength that you give us. Thank you, Lord, that we're surrounded by people that we can love and who can love us. And you reveal yourself to us in many wonderful ways. As we continue to enjoy your presence and to worship you, Father, and may you continue to cleanse us. Forgive us all our iniquities, Lord. Nawa po ay kami linisin ninyo. Pakahugasan nyo at gawin nyo karapat dapat lumapit sa inyo. Hindi dahil kami, Lord, merong sariling merits. But only because of your grace. Only because you love us and you forgive us. So may you be our speaker, Father. We ask you to speak before your people. Lead us unto greater knowledge of you, unto greater godliness. And as we know more, we may not only increase in understanding and knowledge, but may we actually increase in godliness, in Christ-likeness. Nawa bawat mapag-aaralan naming salita ay maging pagkain na aming espiritu. Kalakasan namin at kami lalo namang maging kawangis ng iyong anak na si Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we reject, rebuke, and drive away all work of evil, all malicious plans of the evil one against his assembly, all work of evil men and evil spirits, we reject in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, infill us, empower us to see what must be seen, to hear what must be heard. And through all this, Father, may you be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask you to be our speaker, O Lord. We have not gathered to hear a human voice, but your voice. Use your servant as your footstool, but be our speaker. Preside over this activity. We are your church. We are your people. And we ask you, Father, let your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. When little things become big. Atin pong basahin ang John chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. John chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. And may the Lord bless us through the reading of his wonderful and powerful words. So ang Panginoon po ay nagpunta dito sa lugar na ito na merong isang paliguan, isang bukal na nagkakaroon ng isang maliit na pool, and it was uh, surrounded by beautiful colonnades. At kung saan maraming mga may mga kapansan na, na doon ay natitipon sapagkat naghihintay sila ng Himala. A lot of disabled people were lying by this beautiful pool because they think that when the water gets stirred, the first one to get into the water will get healed. And once in a while, this quiet pool would suddenly stir up as if somebody is trying to stir it. And they believe that an angel would come down from heaven and stir the water. At kontas ito, ang kauna-unahang lumusong sa tubig, sa dinami-rami ng mga may kapansanang naroon, eh siya lang ang mag-isang pagagalingin. So there was an invalid who was in that condition for 38 years, and he was one of those people. At syempre, pagka yung tubig ay eh, biglang uh, kinalawkaw at umalimbuka yung tubig na ganyan, syempre maiiwan siya dahil siya nga ay lumpo. Kaya hindi natin alam kung gano'ng katagal na siyang nakapila doon, hindi na siya mauna-una, ang tagal-tagal na. Mabuti pa yung mga bulag, kahit hindi na nakikita kung saan tatalon, makakatalon. Pag sinabing, ayan, gumagalaw na yung tubig. Kaya wala silang inabangan kung kailan kukulo at kung kailan biglang mahahalo ka yung tubig na yon. And the Lord was noticing and watching this whole uh, uh, tableau. And the Lord asked this invalid, do you want to get well? Interestingly, the question was not if he wanted to be the first one to get into the water. 
The Lord asked, Do you want to get well? But the invalid's answer was very oblique. He did not even answer the question. Ang sabi niya, Eh, hindi nga po ako mauna sa paglusong. He complained about his inability to go in first into the water when it is stirred. So, obviously, this invalid was focused on the technicality of how the miracle might happen and not on the miracle itself. That's why it is important to focus on the spirit, not on the form of anything and everything. Because the form is only superficial. It is the spirit of the event, the spirit of the word, the spirit of everything that happens that really matter. And so the Lord said, Bumangon ka, tumayo ka, buhatin mo yung higaan mo, tumuwi ka na. And this he did. By the power of the words of Jesus, this invalid, who heard Jesus said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And he did. And he walked away from this rather interesting situation. So the man was cured. He picked up his mat, and he walked away. What healed him? The water? No. Being first into the water? No. The words of Jesus healed him. Kasi sinabi ng Panginoon, get healed. Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. So the healed man picked up his mat. And what does that? That healed people have to be responsible. Or have to be more responsible. Probably before, he was not tasked to pick up his mat. In fact, he was not even tasked to walk by himself. Somebody would carry him and his mat. But now that he could walk, he did not have to depend on others. Pwede na niyang buhatin yung sarili niyang higaan at yun nga ang kanyang ginawa. Ang mga tao po na hinihipo ng Panginoon, pinapagaling, binibigyan ng husay, ng talino, ng lakas, ay inaasahang merong gagawin. Hindi tayo napapagaling, hindi tayo nabibigyan ng lakas at kakayahan para lang walang gawin sa buhay. Merong kasamang responsibilidad yung ibinibigay ni Lord na enablement, empowerment, strengthening. So it must be clear that it was not the pool, it was not the race to the pool that mattered, but it was the touch of the Lord, which was not even physical. It was through His words. Let's keep on reading. John 5, verses 9 up to 15. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jew said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. And once more, may the Lord give us more blessings as we continue reading this wonderful episode. So the day that it took place, this how wonderful miracle was a Sabbath. You know, the Jews were so obsessed with the Sabbath that the Sabbath has become their God already. Well, the Jews were given by the Lord the Sabbath so that the Sabbath would serve them and they could rest. Now, they were serving the Sabbath. Nabaligtad na. Sa kabaitan ng Diyos, binigyan sila ng araw ng pamamahinga. Sa kanila namang pagiging technical at sa kanilang pagiging mababaw, yung araw ng pamamahinga na ang naging amo nila at pinaglingkuran nila na naging karoon na ng mga elaborate traditions and do's and don'ts concerning the Sabbath that it became already one great task just to observe it. You see how people can squander God's resources, God's blessings, God's grace. God was giving them something nice and they turned it into a God that was making their life very difficult. So, nobody noticed the miracle. People looked at the calendar and said, what day is it? It's a Sabbath. This thing should not be happening. Even God should not be watching on a Sabbath. And they did not make a big event out of this guy carrying his mat. Maybe this mat is not just the kind of mat that we have in this country that is easy to carry. Maybe it was some, some, some kind of a stretcher. Something that would be lifted by people so this uh, invalid man could be transported. So it was not very, very easy to carry it. It would take a lot or probably some kind of exertion and labor. 
At yung mga tao naman, hindi nila sabing, wow, gumaling na ang lumpo na kalalakad na. Ang sabi nila, bakit ka nagbubuhak? Sabat ngayon. This is what we mean. When little things become big. The little thing became became big because they did not see the big thing. In the absence of big things, small things become big to small minds. That's why the size of our heart, the size of our personhood, the size even of our brain can be more correctly measured by the size of the thing that bothers us. By the size of the thing that makes us angry. If you are very angry at a little thing, you must have a very small heart and a very small brain. So that a little thing fills it to capacity that you cannot take anymore. It is important that through faith and through God's grace, we enlarge our hearts and we enlarge our minds so that more could be contained without destroying us, without us getting overfed or overdosed. It is important. Nakita niyo po ba, ang laki-laking event, yung tao, 38 years na lumpo. 38 years na nakapila para tumalun dun sa tubig, pagka biglang yung tubig ay kumulukulo at nakaukaw. Lagi na lang naiiwan. Ilang taon na siyang bigong-bigo. Hindi na niya nagawa ang dapat gawin sa buhay, hindi na siya nagkaroon ng karir, hindi na siya nagkaroon ng full life, puro na lang kabiguan. Tapos ngayong araw na ito, na siya ibinigyan ng Panginoon ng isang malaking himala para siya makalakad, makapaglingkod, at mabuhat yung sarili niyang higaan imbes siya ang binubuhat na kasama nun. Walang natuwa. Ang nakita nila isang maliit na maliit na bagay. Why? The people ignored the big thing and focus on the small thing. Probably because the big miracle trivialized their small teachings and their small traditions. Everybody was already comfortable believing that to get healed, you should be the first into the water when it is stirred. And all of a sudden, this guy did not even have to go into the water and he was healed. So, their traditions were bypassed. Their cozy little do's and don'ts were ignored and trivialized by the mighty touch of the Lord. And these people wanted to cling to their traditions. They wanted to cling to their conventions and their do's and don'ts and their culture of doing things. So they ignored the big thing. They had little faith and big tradition. Sometimes tradition, religiosity, religion can be the major stumbling block in finding the Lord. Because there are self-appointed messiahs and self-appointed people and committees and congresses that say, this is what God says. This is what God wants. Well, all of us, are, all along, they are just hiding behind God and actually promulgating their own biases, their own teachings. And they are actually perpetuating their own interests. This is what religion has been doing all throughout history. That's why many people never really find God. And while well, they have not found God, they have found lots of religion. And then they get this illusion and they think that it was God that gave them the disillusionment. And then they say, I don't believe in God anymore. It is important not to have just religion, but spirituality. Not just a major set of do's and don'ts and traditions, but go to the heart of Scripture. So the Lord gave this miracle, first because this man was needing it so badly, and the Lord had pity on him. And second, it was also a statement that people don't have to go through this unnecessary labyrinth of do's and don'ts and religious practices because God can be found by anyone who really looks for Him. Pwedeng lampasan yung mga institusyon, lampasan yung mga tradisyon. Sa katunayan, the harshest words of Jesus were not against the prostitutes, nor the tax collectors, nor the grave and obvious sinners, but against the establishment, against the religious hypocrites and hypocrisy that was making religion a major burden for the people. His harsh words were only for the priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the people who wore long robes and had proper attire and costumes, who wanted to be greeted and given important places everywhere they go. There, the harshest words of Jesus were for these people because they made God more inaccessible rather than making God accessible to the people. Why? Because they were standing in the way. Instead of them standing in the gap, 
with one hand holding the Lord and another holding the people and joining them together through their priesthood. They were the ones standing in the way so that neither God nor people could fellowship because of the many lies and the many trivialities that they have institutionalized. It is important to have a fresh attitude, to look deep into Scripture and find God with or without the aid of religion. It is nice when organized religion really represents God, but look at history and you know that it has been wanting all throughout. That the church, no matter what church that is, has been instruments of oppression, of exploitation and perpetuation of the power block, whatever the power block may be. Kaya ayaw ng Panginoon ng mga sobrang mga kaartihan at ganyan mga religion kasi natatakpan yung katotohanan at ang mga tao lalong nahihirapan para siya'y abutin. Kailangan marami kang bayaran, marami kang gawin, marami kang kung ano-anong hirap na ginagawa para mo lang marating ang Diyos sa matala ang Panginoon. Hindi naman niya tayo pinaakyat sa langit. Siya ang bumaba rito para talaga tayo magkaabot-abot at magkahawak kamay sa Kanya. At ang Panginoong Diyos, iniwan niya yung kanyang kaluwalhatian na muhay bilang isang halos ay hamak na tao para lamang mapalapit sa atin. At lahat ng hirap ay kanya ng binata, tiniis, inilagay sa kanyang katawan at namatay siyang daladala yon para tayo iligtas na. Tapos ngayon, pinihirapan ng relihiyon ng mga tao para makarating sa Diyos. It is important to seek the Lord with all our hearts. Directly. It is nice when some people explain to us scripture because they have you know, probably taken a few steps ahead of us and they know a little bit more than we do. That can be helpful. It is important when people help us pray and pray for us. But you cannot depend on just people praying for you and people studying the Bible for you and just giving it to you on a silver platter. It is important to search God with all our hearts in a personal way. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And it is pathetic that many people are not able to find God because they're always asking the priesthood, they're always asking the establishment to do it for them. It is a personal matter. So, tinanong nila yung tao, bakit ka nagbubuhak? Huwag kang magbuhak. Araw ngayon ng Panginig, Sabat ngayon. Sino bang may kagagawan yan? Sabi ng tao, ewan ko ho. Eh, sabi kasi nung nagpagaling sa akin, eh, buhatin ko to, eh, binuhat ko. Loaded itong sentence na to. Sasab niya, ipinagbabawal niya sa akin magbuhat. Hindi niya naman ako napagaling kahit kailan. E di siyempre, yung nagpagaling sa akin, yun ang sinood ko. Eh sino ba yun? Eh huwag ko, eh nawala na dyan eh. Nakita niya ang Panginoon, matapos niya gumawa ng malaking bagay, hindi naman niya, inilagay yung sarili niya sa ibabaw na entablado at sabi, ako gumawa nito, ako ginawa nito, purihin niyo ako. It was very anonymously done and he uh, disappeared in the crowd. He blended into the crowd so easily that nobody could recognize anymore who did this wonderful miracle. Sabi ng tao, ewan ko, hindi ko po alam. And so, ano pa ang susunod dating nakitang eksena dito? Jesus found the man at the temple. This is very interesting. Una, the Lord found him in this terrible situation waiting for healing. The second time that the Lord found him, he was at the temple. As soon as this guy could walk, as soon as this man would be able to transport himself on his own, we find him going not to the nightclub, not to the casino, not to a picnic, but to the temple. It's very important that people who are enabled by the Lord to move should move towards him. Of course, the temple was just a place. It was just a building but in those times, in the heart of that invalid who was healed, it was the symbol of God's presence and God's economy and God's love. So, mobility should bring people to the Lord. Hindi yung binigyan ka ng sasakyan kung saan saan ka nagpupunta. Binigyan ka ng pera kung anong ginagawa mong mga kabaligtaran ng gusto ng Diyos. Binigyan ka ng kahusayang kumanta ang pinagkakakanta mo tungkol sa mga bagay na ayaw ng Diyos. Binigyan tayo ng mga resources ginagamit natin sa paglayo sa Diyos, hindi paglapit. Resources that God gives us must be used by us to come closer to Him, not to go away from Him. That's why it's become sad when some people are enriched materially and then those resources destroy their spirit because they use the resources not to go nearer to God but to go farther away from Him. Let's learn from this man. As soon as he was healed, he went to the temple. So the Lord healed him. 
Act 1, sin 1, the Lord heals him. Act 1, sin 2, the Lord finds him in the temple. May I ask everyone here, we receive healing from the Lord, whether you know it or not. We receive blessings from the Lord. We receive empowerment from the Lord. And after we have received the blessings, we have received the empowerment. Where does the Lord find you? Where does the Lord find me? Importante. We are responsible. Binigyan ka ng kakayahan, tapos anong ginawa mo? Lumapit ka ba? O lumayo? Yung mga iba, walang mga trabaho. Dasal lang, dasal magkatrabaho. Nung nagkatrabaho, hindi mo na makita sa church. Dasal lang, dasal, Lord, bigyan niyo po ako ng asawa. Nung nagkaasawa, wala na. Hindi na naglingkod. Bigyan niyo po ako ng anak. Nung nabigyan ng anak, nawala na. Nabura na sa mapa. Hindi na rin nakita uli sa temple or sa church. Bigyan niyo po ako ng negosyo. Nung nagkaroon ng negosyo, sobrang nang nalulong sa negosyo. Hindi mo na makita sa mga gawain ng Panginoon. Bakit pa nabigyan? Binibigyan tayo ng Panginoon. Hindi tayo para malayo sa Kanya, kundi para tayo malapit. Kaya tayo dapat ay sumusuri ng mga tinatanggap natin. At sinasabi natin, Teka, kung tatanggapin ko itong isang bagay na ito, galing ba ito sa Diyos? Sa biglang tingin, maganda. Pero anong gagawin ito sa aking espiritu? Anong gagawin ito sa aking buhay? Anong gagawin ito sa aking buhay, pamilya? Makakabuti ba sa amin itong trabaho ito? Itong assignment na ito? Itong resources na ito? O hindi? Malalayo ba ako sa Diyos o hindi? At kung malalayo, wag na. Isa lang yung pandaraya ng sanlibutan. At kung mabuti ang bigay ng Diyos, hindi lang yun dahil doon sa binigay ang mabuti, dapat mabuti rin ang bunga. May mga tao na bigyan ng kagandahan. Anong ginawa sa kagandahan? Na gamit pa ang kagandahan para marumihan ang espiritu at kaluluwa. Imbes na makatulong. Kaya sometimes, beauty is a curse. When people who are given such beauty are not able to glorify God through it. And they allow such beauty to destroy them. Mas maraming nade-destroy na beautiful kesa hindi beautiful. Paano? Madaling matempt at madaling makatempt. Siyempre, kung hindi ka masyadong kagandahan, hindi, hindi ka hinahabol ang tukso. Eh ang ganda-ganda mo, di hinahabol ka lalo. Kaya napakalaking pananagutan na maging maganda. Sabihin niyo sa sarili niyo, ang laki pala ng pananagutan ko. Biruin mo. Malaking pananagutan na maging mayaman. Malaking pananagutan na maging matalino na maging malakas kasi kung pwedeng lumapit tayo sa Panginoon sa pamamagitan niyan, lalo naman na pwedeng gamitin niya na entry point ng temptation. Isang pananagutan. So Jesus found him in the temple. Very important. And Jesus said, Wow, see, you are well again. Eh kasi kilala na naman ng Panginoon yung bago 38 years ago eh. Alam na ng Panginoon ang sitwasyon niya eh. So niya, it's good to see you well again. And then, very interestingly, The Lord said, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. By the looks of it, it seems that the root cause of the man's illness was sin. That's why something bad happened to him. And the Lord who knows everything says, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Why worse? Eh ayan, naramdaman mo na yung iresulta ng sin. Nagkasakit ka na. Dapat matuto ka na. Pag inulit mo pa uli yan, mas grabe nang darating sa'yo. Dahil sinayang mo naman yung pagkakatuto mo. At hindi lang yon, Pinaghimalaan ka na ng Diyos. Binigyan ka na ng Kanyang grasya. Tapos sinayang mo pa uli. Eh, worse talaga ang mangyayari. Sa palagay niyo ba, mga kapatid, tayo nagbabasa lang ng na isang kwento na nangyari almost 2,000 years ago? Do you really think that we are just reading about a man who lived and died about 2,000 years ago? Or are we reading about our own lives? One of the wonders of Scripture is that the stories are literally true. But the stories also have a second and a higher meaning. They are also symbolic. Tayo yan eh. We are that man. We are that invalid that has been trying very hard to find solutions for our problems and needs and wants and lose and not find what we want. Then Jesus walks into our lives and gives us a shortcut and says, Believe in me and you will be saved. Believe in me and you can be what you have to be. You can bypass tradition. You can bypass the do's and don'ts of men. You don't have to be winning this race. You don't have to be the first one to get into the water. You don't even need the water. 
Just take my words and you will be healed. The Bible was preserved not only to regal us with interesting stories that happened a long time ago in a faraway land. No, the Bible was preserved because it is about us today. For all people, for all time. That's why it's so miraculous. You read about somebody you never met, about a culture you've never been into, and you find yourself in the story. And you find their aches, your aches. Their struggles, yours. And you know what? You will also find their God, your God. If you will open your ears and eyes and heart. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. If the Lord was able to heal that man, there's no reason why the Lord cannot heal us now. Maybe we can walk. Maybe we are not physically crippled. But we suffer many forms of paralysis. We suffer many forms of illnesses that also make us immobile. That render us nearly prisoners of our own mats, our own stretchers and beds. When you cannot forgive somebody that needs to be forgiven, you are not free. You are an invalid. When you cannot forget some bitterness of the past, you are a prisoner of the past, like that man was a prisoner of his mat. When you cannot overcome pains and sorrows of childhood, disappointments and aches of the past, we are actually invalid. We are paralyzed, just like that man. Except that his was a physical paralysis. But a lot more people are suffering spiritual and emotional paralysis. And the same Lord that asked him, do you want to get well? He's asking everyone now, do you want to get well? And he says, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. In a manner of speaking, the Lord is saying, get up from your sorrows, get up from your past, get up from all of these things that hinder you to be the full person that I want you to be. And then be responsible, pick up your mat, do what you must do. And walk away from this problem. Walk away from the situation. And the answer is, walk to the temple and commune with God. This is the same truth that we can see then and we can see now. But the Lord says, now you're healed. A lot of us have been healed by the Lord in many ways. Touched by the Lord, empowered by the Lord. And the Lord is saying, not only to this man, but also to us, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Nangyayari po kasi sa maraming tao, pagka natanggap na natin yung blessing, nalilimot na natin ang Diyos at tayo nalalasing na muli. Taimtim lang magdasal pag nanganganib ang buhay. Mahabang magdasal pagka maraming panganib at nangangailangan. Sunod ng sunod sa Diyos pagka mahirap at hirap na hirap at kawawang kawawa. Pero oras na nabigyan na ng laya, nabigyan na ng mga kayamanan, nabigyan na ng lakas, unti-unting nakakalimot sa Diyos. Kaya itong istorya ang binabasa natin ngayon. This is not a lesson in history. This is a lesson in current events. This is a lesson about you and me. The Lord says, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Do you think it's an accident that we are all hearing this now? I don't think so. The Lord loves us. And the Lord likes to remind us. So the man was well again. And the man who was made well again should stop sinning. It is important. The first meeting, the Lord healed him. The second meeting, the Lord warned and taught him. Usually, religion would do it the other way. The first meeting, religion would preach and tell you what to do and not do. And the second meeting, if at all it would be that way, then that's when the blessing comes. But the Lord gave the blessing first before he preached. A very wonderful principle that we can learn. That we should earn our right to be heard even before we preach to people left and right. Have we done them something good? Pag tinignan po natin yung tao, kawawa naman, lagi na lang siyang naiiwan pagkatalo na na doon sa tubig. Kasi walang tumutulong sa kanya, obviously. Siguro merong mga tumutulong sa kanya, bubuhati siya doon, dadali siya sa umaga, pero iiwan na siya. Bahala ka na dyan sa buhay mo. Kukunin ka na lang namin mamayang hapon pag magsasara na yung pool. Kaya lagi siyang naiiwan. But what do we learn here? That people have hope. Even, and especially if, there is no other human being to help them. Because Jesus is with us. Do you ever feel alone at times and feel that nobody is going to help you when you have a need? Or you have experienced many times when there was a need and nobody came to the rescue? Look around you. You don't have to look far. Jesus is only a prayer away. 
And this is also one of the very important symbolisms of this story. That there are people who probably feel alone, that there's nobody to help you, but it's not true. Bakit ang dami-dami doon mga pasyente itong napansin ni Lord? Siguro dahil ito yung walang tumutulong eh. You know, the Lord is the greatest equalizer of many opportunities and many blessings. So nakita niya itong taong to walang nagbubuhat. So anong ginawa niya? Sinabi niya, huwag ka nalang kumasa sa mga magbubuhat. Pagkagalingin na kita, gusto mo ba? Kayo ba umaasa sa magbubuhat? Umaasa ba tayo sa kapwa tao? Nagkakaedad na tayo, umaasa na lang ba tayo sa ating mga anak, mga apo? E eh, paano kung di sila naaasahan? Mga anak tayo, umaasa na lang ba sa magulang? E eh, paano kung mga magulang natin ay hindi naaasahan? Meron dyan mga husband, mga wives, iniaasa na lang sa kanilang kabyak yung kaligayahan? Na inaasahan nilang sila ay mamahalin, nahagurin, aabutan ng kape? E eh, paano kung hindi kayo naabutan ng kape? Anong gagawin mo? Magmumok mo ka buong buhay mo? Aasa ka na lang sa tao? Put your trust in the Lord. Hope in the Lord and you will not be disappointed. But when you put your trust only on men and women and hope only in fellow men and women, what will happen to you? You are bound to be disappointed. Because even if the men and women that we like to help us are willing, they are not always able. And even if they are always able, they are not always willing. That's why it is important not to turn men and women into gods. I depend on you, I love you, I won't last a day without you. That's garbage. Pag umasa lang tayo ng umasa sa tao, wala kayong inaantay kundi kabiguan, kawawa kayo. That's why the Lord says, and the Bible says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Because whoever you love is also the same person that can hurt you the most. And why does God want to be the first love of our lives? Because He will not hurt us. He wants to protect us from the very people that we would put on a pedestal and love so much like a God. And then all of a sudden, they betray us and we are, what? Lost. Or they don't betray us, but they die. So we're lost just the same. So ang gusto ng Diyos, siya ang number one. Kasi yung number one, pagka siya, mapoprotect tayo. Isipin natin ang ating buhay. Isipin natin ang buhay ng napakaraming mga tao sa paligid natin. Di ba yung sobrang nabigo? Dahil sobrang nagmahal, sobrang nagtiwala, Sobrang umasa. Tapos nabigo. Ayaw na Lord na mabigo tayo ng ganon. Kaya sinasabi niya, sa akin kayo umasa. Sa akin kayo magmahal ng lubos. Hindi kayo lugi. Laging masusuklayan ang inyong pag-ibig ng higit-higit pa. Sa akin kayo mag-invest ng panahon, ng oras. It doesn't mean that God does not want us to give time and effort and love to fellow men. But put God first. So that men and women around us fall or they go away or they betray us or they fail. But because God is number one and in the center of our lives, the center remains and we remain standing. We get hurt. We become sad. But we don't fall. We don't get devastated. Because the center of our lives is God who does not change like shifting shadows. And who will not betray us. The God who says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And what other proof can be better than this God becoming a man living in this miserable and wretched planet and dying in the most horrible way? for us. What more proof can anybody want? Not the mechanics, but the power of the Lord. And people have hope, even and especially if there is no one else to help them, because Jesus is with us. And what is important, brothers and sisters, obey Jesus, not tradition, not religion, or religious authorities, when they themselves do not obey our loyalty to the chain of command stops when the commander above us is no longer surrendering to the supreme commander who is God Himself. No matter what religion or institution, pag ang itinuturo na nila ay labag na sa salita ng Diyos, hindi na yun ang gusto ng Diyos, our loyalty stops and bypasses them and goes direct to God. That is how we have spiritual growth and blessing. And what do you do, brothers and sisters? Go to the temple as soon as Jesus blesses you. And that temple is no longer a building. It is no longer just uh, an exclusive society. The temple is the hearts of people. Go to people. Serve the Lord. The Lord enables us so that we can serve like He serves. It is important. And stay at the temple when Jesus blesses you. Nabe-bless na nga tayo. Ba't pa tayo aalis? Kailangan stay in the presence of the Lord. And the important reminder is, stop sinning if the Lord already healed you. Stop it. Hindi nakikipagbiroan sa atin ng Diyos. Hindi isang malaking joke 
ang ating pananampalataya. Kung tayo pinatawad na, pinatawad na tayo, huwag nang balikan pa. Hindi yung pabalik-balik, the same boring confessions because the same boring falls. Kailangan tama na. We should get better and better because the Lord and the power of the Spirit changes us from glory to glory. And when we're teaching people, when we're sharing with people, earn your right to be heard. Do them good. Love them. Serve them first before you preach from your high ivory tower. The question that I like to ask again is what little things become big in your life? What is big in our lives? Fear? Is that big? Is that what occupies your time and effort and concerns? Worry? Anger? Is that what is big? Bitterness? Jealousy? Envy? Desire? Sin? Is that what is big? God is bigger than all those. God is bigger than all those. In many people's lives, worry and concern and needs and wants become big because they forget who God is. And they forget that it is really God who is big and not those concerns. You may have big problems, but God is infinitely bigger than such problems. Therefore, those problems should not be big. If only you are looking at God and really appreciating His greatness. God is bigger than any problem we can imagine. So what is big in your life? When little things become big, remember God. When little things become big, refocus on God. When little things become big, rely on God. And those things will become small. Small, big, it all depends on your measurement. But God is immeasurable. God fills heaven and earth with His glory and with His power. So what is big enough to eclipse Him? None. Pero alam niyo po ba kung bakit nagiging malaki ang isang bagay? Pag malapit sa inyong mata, malaki ang isang bagay. Halimbawa, itong desk na ito, pagkaliit-liit lang ito eh, pag malayo. Pero pag malapit sa inyong mata, natakpan na buong mata nyo, malaki na. Kaya yung mga maliliit na bagay, pag malapit sa ating mata, malaki. Ano ang malapit sa inyong mata? Problema? Pag yan ang inilapit ninyo, malaki talaga. Natatakpan pati Diyos. Mga kagustuhan natin, mga desires, mga wants, mga worries, ilayun nyo yan. At ang ilapit natin ng Panginoon. Kung sinong inilalapit natin sa ating puso, sa ating mata, yun ang lumalaki. Kaya ngayon, kung tatanong ko kayo, ano bang malaki sa inyong buhay, dun yung malalaman kung sinong malapit sa inyo. Kung malaki yung worry, ibig sabihin yun na talaga malapit, kaya lumaki. Kahit nga mga bundok, eh, pagka malayo, kapraso lang. Nakita nyo yung mga bituin, ang liliit, pero yan yung mga planetang pagkalalaki, nahikita mas malaki pa dito sa ating daigdig, pero dahil malayo, maliit. Kaya yung mga iba na liliitan sa Diyos, magagawa ba yan ng Diyos? Kaya ba yan ng Diyos? Baka hindi. Ibig sabihin, ang layo-layo nyo sa Diyos. Kaya siya maliit. Pero kung malapit tayo, malaki siya. Sino ang malaki sa inyong buhay ngayon? Ano? Dear Lord, we thank you for reminding us. Salamat sa pagpapaalala niyo na kayo yung tunay na malaki. Hindi yung aming mga pangamba, hindi yung aming mga sakit, hindi yung aming mga concerns. Hindi rin yung buhay namin dito na 70, 80, 90, 100 years lang. Samantalang, Lord, you are eternal. That even this whole lifetime that we count long is just a tiny dot in an otherwise never-ending line of eternity. Lord, teach us to see things in perspective. Teach us to measure things by you, by your greatness. And surely all our cares and worries will go to where they really belong. They will be counted as small because they are compared to you. Ipakita mo sa amin ang pagkukulang namin. Sa mga nahipo mo na Panginoon, nawa makita mo, hindi na kami bumabalik sa mga dati namin mga kasalanan pa. At kami umasa sa inyo, hindi sa kakayahang mauna sa paglusong sa tubig, makipagkarera sa tao at makipagunahan, kundi umasa sa inyo. Ituro mo sa amin, Panginoon. Let us be silent before the Lord for a minute. Let the Holy Spirit give you very personal applications of this message. And may the Lord bless all you. Ang katatapos pong mensahe ni Pastor Ed Lapis ay pinamagatang, When little things become big.